Hi, I'm Tim Sturgis, and I'm sitting down with Evan Austin, who's going to be representing the United States in the Paralympics in a couple of weeks. And Evan, first of all, welcome, and uh, tell us a little bit about your journey from the time you qualified and what you've been up to lately. Uh, yeah, I qualified um, in early June um, in Bismarck, North Dakota, and uh, name was announced on the 17th, and uh, ever since then, just been back in the water getting ready for London. So We all followed that journey at the qualifications just from, from afar, and it seemed pretty exciting. Uh, how was it from your perspective? Uh, it was terrifying. <laughs> um, it was a rush. Uh, I was anxious, excited the entire time. Um, but when they said my name, you know, it, it was all worth it. So, so let's talk again about uh, the preparation from then till till now, and what you have uh, ahead of you for the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, uh, we're just kind of refining some strokes. Um, you know, just making sure that um, when I get to London, it's all clean and all smooth and really fast. So. Now, it has to be, there's so much going on, uh, you know, in terms of things you have to do, in terms of rules, regulations, U.S., you know, Olympic stuff. This, this is kind of the big time. Has it been overwhelming? Uh, yeah, you know, it's some, sometimes, uh, you know, just everyone emailing me constantly, like, how are you doing? Where's the training at? You know, what practices did you do today? Um, you know, I have anti-doping agencies after me, um, testing me. Um, you know, just got to stay in check with, you know, everyone Team USA. So, you know, sometimes it gets a little crazy and a little hectic, but you got to stay on top of it. So. How does it feel going from Terre Haute Torpedoes to Terre Haute South to Team USA? You know, it was a pretty big jump um, from going to a local club team, you know, all the way to the biggest team in, you know, in the country. So um, it, was, it was just a moment that I had been preparing myself for for four years. Um, and, and, and now that I'm on Team USA, I'm, I'm really ready for it and I'm enjoying my time. So. Let's talk about your first attempt at the, at the trials, I guess, when you were, what, 15. Um, the difference in your approach there than, than, than how you approach this time around. Yeah, you know, we were pretty clueless as to how it all works the first time I went up there. You know, we were, I was 15. Uh, it was my first Paralympic event um, in my entire career. So uh, we went up there and, you know, came really close. It was obviously let down, but, you know, at that young age, uh, we still had time to, you know, make another run. And that's what we plan to do. So uh, when, when we went back this time, we, we knew we had focus goals. We knew what to do to make that team, and uh, it ended up working out. So Let's talk about any goals you might have set uh, for, the, for the Paralympics now. Uh, yeah, I, I want a medal. I want to, I want to come home with some hardware, and I want to go fast doing it. So um, as far as uh, individual goals, uh, I, I just really want to, I want to bring something back for, for this, this country and this town and, and my team. So. Let's talk a little bit about how you came up through this town. And again, you mentioned the club team, the Tarot Torpedoes, and, and just a lot of time and a lot of laps in the pool. Kind of take us through that journey and how that's been. You know, I started uh, about middle of the sixth grade year, and uh, I had done other sports in the past, and I really found like my niche, and it, it felt right. And within a you know few months, it became you know my life's passion. And uh, ever since then, it's it's been you know practice, practice, practice. You you really can't do anything without putting some time and some hard work into it. Um, and, and and when we we found that you know all that hard work had paid off in Bismarck, uh, you know all those really hard practices, you know, where we're exhausted, leave the pool, you know, just thinking, why did I just do that to myself? It, that all became worth it. Well, and again, the swimmers put in so much time before school, Absolutely. after school, uh, and you're going back and forth <laughs> up and down the pool. How do you, how do you maintain your focus for you know, years? Uh, a, a lot of the time, uh, swimmers have this trick. We, we like to sing. Uh, <laughs> A lot of us sing long sets. You got to do something to keep your head off, you know, the pain that's in your muscles. So, you know, we like to have a good time, you know, maybe sing. Uh, just think about other things, you know. Uh, it's better to be swimming really hard than, you know, focus on the hours and hours of homework that you have to do after it's all done. So, uh, you just kind of got to keep an open mind, clear head, um, and, and, and stay in the game. So, it seems like with swimmers, and I'm sure other athletes as well, but they tend to give back, you know, and I know you've been coaching some kids and, and a lot of people looking up to you. Talk about giving back to the sport. Yeah, I, I taught torpedoes uh, swim lessons for, for a little bit, and I was an assistant coach on Terre Haute South's team um, last winter. And, you know, I, I just really like that I've put the time in. I, kn I know some skills. I know some valuable lessons in, in my sport. And it, to me, it wouldn't be right if I didn't try and give, you know, some of that back. You know, I've attained some success, and, and it, it's wrong to me that if I, I don't try and share that and share my knowledge and, and share what experiences I've had to, to people who are going to maybe experience that in the future. What about you know, a lot of experiences in the pool, but it seems like uh, certainly uh, with swimming and, and definitely with Coach Thompson, you, you've learned some life lessons as well. Absolutely. Um, you know, first thing about swimming is uh, determination. Um, you got to be determined. You got you to know your goals. 
you got to know that um, it's going to take a while for you to achieve success and uh, patience and discipline. All those, you know, just they all coil into one thing. And and um, and through swimming, Coach Thompson's taught me a lot of that. And that'll take me way further than the pool will. So let's talk about Coach Thompson and that relationship. Uh, you know, I've got to, I've got to see that relationship, how he treats uh, his his students in in the classroom, and then also uh, kids in in the pool. Talk about a little bit about that relationship. Yeah, I mean, you know, at, at a young age, it's uh, he's your coach. And over the last couple of years, you know, I graduated and I stayed around it. And, uh, you know, he was my boss, he was the head coach, I was the assistant coach, so it became an associate you know, kind of relationship. And, and now it's more of a friendship, you know. Um, he's watched me grow over the last six or seven years, and, and uh, I owe a lot to uh, my success to him. And, and, you know, so we like to have a good time, um, but in the end, uh, I know that he's the boss and I trust him. And, um, Whatever he wants to do with my swimming, I'm, I put my faith in him. So, let's talk about when you came back after you qualified. It was a big, big deal for a lot of people. Absolutely. Uh, and you got a chance to speak to some of the younger team uh, swimmers. Uh, what did you tell them? You know, I got a little choked up um, because that that moment uh, when I heard my name had just been so so long in the making. Um, that yeah, that kind of moment for an athlete, you know, a second chance. You know, I failed four years ago and then I went back, and you know, I, my dreams came true. You know, I made this team for USA. I just told them that you have to stick with it and you have to have fun. Because uh, without, you know, just without fun, it becomes work. And with it, when it becomes that, it's, it's going to become too much. And, and you can't relax and have a good time with it. Um, so, you know, me being at these big venues and big meets, um, being able to experience what, you know, what the top of competition is, you know, I just tried to, tried to tell them, you know, just to have a good time and not let their heads get to it. Um, and to just relax. Cool. Well, I think we're all very excited for your opportunities that, uh, that you have ahead of you. Uh, the whole Wabash Valley is kind of climbing on board, following your progress. Any, any final words you'd like to tell the people that are out there supporting you? Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Team Evan. Uh, you guys have been great. Um, a couple of friends started that on Twitter and uh, it's, it's grown and, and it's just awesome. The support um, the community has given me, um, it, it really helped me finish my races up in Bismarck and I know it will in London. So. Now everybody here in the Wabash Valley wishes uh, you the best of luck and thanks for joining us.